All right, so like I said, there are three main types of filters in terms of uh, the characteristics and the, the pass and stop bands. Um, so like I said, the three types are Butterworth, Shebyshev, and Elliptic. Uh, the, f the first uh, frequency response that you see here, this is the Butterworth filter type. Okay, so a Butterworth filter is also referred to sometimes as a binomial filter. Uh, the elliptic filter is sometimes referred to as a cow filter. Uh, these terms are interchangeable here. So with the Butterworth filter is, uh, I guess it's also known as a maximally flat filter type. So the Butterworth filter is maximally flat, meaning that uh, here, uh, this is a, a low-pass filter prototype. And you can see here that in the passband, it's it's completely flat, okay, and it's also flat in the uh, in the stop band. So the second type of filter is a Chebyshev filter, and that's this guy over here. And you can see that uh, in this diagram here, in the passband, the Chebyshev filter has some ripple. Uh, so the amount of ripple here is is one of the things that you design for. Uh, common uh, level of ripple, or an accept common acceptable levels of of ripple are, you know, like one dB and less. Uh, sometimes the ripple will appear in the stop band for the Chebyshev filter, so it would be flat in the pass band, and then uh, uh, you would see the ripple appear in, in the stop band. Um, the third filter type that we're going to be looking at is elliptic filters, and you can see that they have ripple both in the stop and pass bands. Okay, so we're going to be using QUCS in this course, you know, for uh, amplifier design work, filter design work. So here are three circuits uh, that I built in QCS Studio. Um, they're all bandpass filters. They all have the same bandwidth. Uh, they're all fifth order uh, bandpass filters. But each one of these filters is of a different type. Okay, so the first one on the top left here is a Butterworth filter. The one on the top right here is a Chebyshev filter. And then the, uh, the one on the bottom here is an elliptic filter. So I just I'm just showing these three slides because um, you know when you, when you compare for example when you compare for example the Butterworth and the elliptic filters um, you really can't tell the two apart like if I were to give you uh, one of these filters without any other information and, and I were to ask you you know what type of filter it is well you can see that there's some resonant structures here so you might guess that it's either a band pass or a band stop filter. Uh, so I should mention that each one of these blocks would be considered like kind of like a resonant tank with a capacitor and an inductor and be a resonant frequency associated with, with each one of those blocks. Uh, same with here and here. Um, so you might be able to guess that, but in terms of like uh, which one is Butterworth, which one is Chebyshev, um, that would take you a bit a bit more time to figure out. Um, the elliptic filter looks kind of different. Uh, you can see that the resonant blocks here, the series resonant blocks uh, look look a little bit different so you might be able to identify that but basically I, I just wanted to sh kind of show you these different filter types up front just to show you how similar they are in appearance um, so we're going to get into like what distinguishes one filter type from another here in a sec all right so like I said uh, the design process starts with the design of a low pass filter prototype and then from there we are able to or we're able to convert the low pass uh, prototype filter into high pass, band pass, or stop band uh, filter types. So I'm going to show some kind of how this is done analytically, at least you know using the methods that are described in in Ludwig's uh, textbook. But primarily, primarily you know in the real world, it, it's much more practical to make use of uh, computer aided design software. So I want you guys to get as much as much experience as possible using that type of of software. So we're going to make use of CAD tools as much as possible in this course. There's a few different ways to kind of learn the difference between Butterworth and Chebyshev, uh, you know, filter types, for example, uh, RF filter design, just in general. Um, I don't really want to get into, you know, deriving transfer functions, uh, driving like analytical expressions for frequency responses. Um, so I thought. I thought kind of long and hard about this, and um, I looked around at you know online about uh, you know how other course courses deliver this material, and uh, the textbook doesn't really uh, talk too much about transfer functions uh, and you know pole locations and all that type of stuff. But I think it's uh, I think it's extremely valuable actually. Uh, just 
the next few slides, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about about the uh, transfer functions and you know poles and all that kind of stuff, just because I I found some really illustrative um, diagrams that that do a good jo job at showing how the frequency response is related to uh, pole locations and it's uh, so first of all this is kind of a, a generic uh, transfer function for a third order low pass filter like one that's shown here this is a low pass filter so it only has poles uh, remember that poles they kind of bring the with each pole there there is a uh, you know a corresponding uh, decrease in the frequency response of you know 20 dB per decade or um, we're not really going to be uh, looking at that in this course but I do want you to kind of uh, remember it and you know just kind of keep it in mind um, so for our low pass filter prototype like I said we always start with a low pass filter prototype and a generic low pass filter has a transfer function that looks something like this with a polynomial in the denominator okay so the way that these different filter types in terms of Butterworth, Shebyshev, etc., are uh, differentiated, differentiated from one another. Are the uh, coefficients on on the polynomial in this denominator here? Okay, so these coefficients determine the filter type, and there are certain types of of polynomials that are used in, in this kind of design work. There's a Butterworth polynomial, Shebyshev polynomials. Okay, so we're not going to get into that. Uh, the book, I think the book mentions it a, a little bit, and it, it is interesting, you know. Um, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's very practical for for what you know for for the learning objectives that I have for this course. So, but anyway, a low pass filter transfer function has kind of a generic look, like like what I'm presenting here, and it's the coefficients on on these uh, polynomial term these powers of s that uh, determine what type of of low pass filter it is so this polynomial here is a, a third order a third order uh, polynomial so uh, you know a polynomial of order n has n poles so this transfer function has uh, three poles like I just mentioned it, it's the poles that determine the shape of the frequency response of the filter and it's very important like I like I said I, I know that we know this intuitively at least with low pass filters even with other filter types you know uh, a zero causes the frequency response to increase 20 db per, db per decade so we can always kind of estimate what a transfer function looks like or sorry what a frequency response looks like just from the number of zeros and poles and all that um, you know but you need to work out where the the pole and zero locations are and stuff so we're not going to be doing all that type type of analysis in this class but just as a kind of a illustration i just wanted to um, show you how the uh the how the the poles of the transfer function determines the shape of the rf filter okay so remember that the the poles are in the s plane which is a complex plane and their locations are determined by these coefficients here so ultimately their the locations are determined by the values of the resistors and the capacitors and the inductors that are in the circuit let's assume that just for illustrative purposes that the this first coefficient uh, is equal to one and these two other coefficients are equal to two so we have a transfer function that looks something like this okay um, so in the s plane uh, you know you could factor the denominator of this transfer function here and uh, we're not going to bother doing that you can just kind of take my word for it that the poles exist in the complex plane here here and here okay so the picture over here on the right that shows the uh, location of the poles and zeros in the S-plane, um, we're used to seeing this from, you know, control systems courses, you know, where we're trying to uh, put poles on the left-hand side of the, uh, you know, the complex plane, and that, you know, that ensures stability, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's this picture over here on the right, and this is what I wanted to show you guys today. So again, this is from uh, the Electrical Engineering Department at the University of Colorado, uh, so you should definitely check out that, that link. But basically, uh, this plot over here on the right is a plot of the the magnitude of this transfer function. And I just wanted to show how, in this case, we have three poles, like I said, over, over here on the right. And you can see how those cause, like, singularities plot over here on the left. And you can kind of see the shape of this surface and how it kind of slopes down, slopes down. And then, in order to get the frequency response from the S-plane, 
uh, you set the alpha term to zero so you just have s as a function of frequency here and that would be this red line that's kind of showing up uh, in this diagram over here on the left that's the frequency response it's the shape of the surface here that's determining uh, you know the, the the shape of the surface at alpha equals zero here which is the frequency response so you know let, let me show you another example of a of a bandpass filter so here's a, a sixth order Butterworth uh, bandpass filter looks something like this um, it has three zeros that are located in the center of the uh, S-plane here, and then the poles are located or in the top half of the S-plane, and three poles in the bottom half of the S-plane here. And you can see how those three pole locations determine the shape of the uh, this uh, surface here, and you can see what it does to uh, the line where S equals J omega, and you you know that's that's a, a standard plot of a bandpass filter, right, with the center frequency here. So that's all very interesting. We're not going to go any deeper into this. I just wanted to give you a kind of a very high level of um, kind of what these transfer functions look like, uh, what the pole locations, uh, you know, how they affect the frequency response, that kind of thing, okay? So in terms of uh, practical filter uh, design, there are a bunch of tables out there um, that describe a either the uh, the coefficients of the either Butterworth or Chebyshev polynomials, uh, or b kind of the the relative uh, magnitudes of the uh, of the impedances. Okay, so the impedance or sorry the uh, the tables in Ludwig's uh, textbook are all in terms of the Im impedances. Okay, so we're not going to be looking at transfer functions, we're not going to be looking at polynomials, we're not going to be looking at poles or coefficients on polynomials, we're going to be looking at the uh, the impedances and, you know, uh, the inductance and capacitance uh, values directly. So in the one of the previous slides from the University of Colorado, uh, the low-pass filter, or uh, the low-pass third-order order filter with the three poles, and I uh, showed the magnitude of the uh, transfer function, this would have been the ratios of the inductance and capacitance values of the low-pass filter prototype. So I'll just show you what that kind of looks like here. So our source impedance is going to be normalized to 1. You would have a capacitor here that's going to be normalized to 1. That's this number here in, in this chart. Uh, the inductor is normalized to 2. That's this value here. Uh, this, sorry, I drew the capacitor to 2, but the second capacitor here is normalized to 1. That's this value here in the chart. And then, of course, we have our uh, load re resistance, which is uh, normalized to 1, which is this value on the right here. Okay, so this is kind of how, how it all starts. We start with tables. You know, well, first we determine the order of the filter that we need that's going to meet our design specs. Uh, then we look up the, uh, I guess we choose like kind of a topology, like it's kind of this pi structure. Um, you could have other p topologies as well. Um, and then I guess the third the third step here in the in the design of a low pass filter uh, prototype would be to look up the table and then find the you know the relative magnitudes of, of the different components.